Hi. Hi, Megan. How are you? I'm well. good. <laughs> Let's just talk over each other the whole time. I uh, sure. It works for me. <laughs> um, well, amazing. So, Tristan. Um, Tristan Blaine, attorney, author, founder of Law Soup, which is a, a media company that explains the law for the layman, um, the layperson, if you will, um, which is definitely me. So I'm really glad <laughs> I'm writing front shotgun for this. Um, of course, your new book titled Law is for the Freelancers Too." a little subtitle here, Legal Basics and tips self-employed people need to know. So uh, lawsuit.org is where they can pre-order. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. We've been getting a lot of orders in today, I think, uh, because of you guys. So th thank you for that. Love that. <laughs> love we love a good pre-order. Yeah. Um, well, amazing. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm, I'm really curious to learn more about your career. Can you tell our audience just like a little bit about yourself and yeah, the lawsuit project? Yeah, sure. Well, so thanks again for having me. I'm happy to do this. Um, so as I like to say, I'm not your typical lawyer. Uh, my mission in, in life is really to democratize the law, to empower everyone, to exercise their rights and protect themselves. Um, so to this end, I created Law Soup uh, back in 2014. Um, so it's really based on a very simple, obvious concept. You know, people don't know enough about the law, right? Um, it's hard to get this information. Um, so I just thought, oh, well, I'll just create a website and put, put up that information, my legal knowledge, and, you know, um, make it free and, and write it in a way that real people can actually understand it. So that's, that's really key. So, so, you know, what a concept, right? It's pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty simple, pretty obvious concept. I mean, yeah, you're distilling it down. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, recently, I, um, I've been writing this the, and publishing these books, um, mm -hmm. the, um, the Laws for Everyone series through Law Soup. Um, so it's, it's really to help people understand the more fundamental concepts of law and civics. Um, you know, so my goal with the books is to make you think, to inspire you, and hopefully to make you laugh a little bit. So, um, you know, I sprinkle in some great quotes from inspirational figures, and um, there's some kind of silly jokes and pop culture references. So I try to make it fun. And um, so it's definitely not your typical legal guides, you know. <laughs> um, so I also have my own law practice, uh, helping freelancers, small businesses, and so other self-employed people, particularly creatives. Um, so things like drafting and reviewing contracts, LLCs, mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, I have simple, transparent, affordable pricing all on my website, um, my law practice website, which is tristanblainlaw.com. So, uh, yeah, so like I said, I'm not, not your typical lawyer. No, so. no, not at all. <laughs> um, we appreciate that. Um, as a uh, fellow creative, um, you know, I'm by day, I'm a, you know, a publicist. Um, so, like, I do not speak legally at all. Um, and so it's important, you know, we all have our strengths. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's important that, you know, we share those, um, and like keep the creative people doing what they're good at. Um, so yeah. why, why do you think it's important to write about law in such a simplistic way? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so I wouldn't exactly call it simplistic, but, um, it's really, um, you know, it's, it's in a way that non-lawyers can understand, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and, and I know mo uh, most people don't know much about the law and, you know, that's, that's fine. So I'm, I'm just. Here, I, I just want to meet people where they're at, mm. right? So, um, you know, it still baffles me that a lot of lawyers, they just, they use legalese with their clients and, or even just communicating to the public. And they assume people know what they're talking about. But a lot of, a lot of times people, it just goes way over their heads, right? Mm. Um, and so, um, you know, but like e even clients often won't speak up because, you know, they, they might feel intimidated. Um, you know, they don't, they don't want to sound stupid, but... Um, but you know, just these are things that a lot most people don't know about. So that's why I'm 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 doing this. You know, it's it's really a common problem for experts in in any field. I think um, mm -hmm. to figure out how to communicate to non-experts. So even creatives and artists have have their own language. Um, you know, as you know, um, that st still sometimes goes over my head. You know, um, but but I've learned a lot from my clients and uh, from my husband, who's a designer. So um, I just think that we all need to do a better job communicating with each other. One, I mean, that is across the board in life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely feel that. So um, remind me of your, we've got some people asking about what your law website is. It's Tristan Blaine Law. 
tristanblainelaw.com. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. I'm just going to pop that in yeah. there for people. Oh, no. <laughs> Man, sit. <laughs> Got the doggos here. So. Oh, love it. Yeah, well. That, this is what happens when we're in our homes <laughs> and, and live. It's great. It's it's so great. People love that. Um, <laughs> so how, how does one like categorize themselves as a freelancer? Mm. Like what laws specifically apply to freelancers? It's a, it's a good question. Um, but you know, so you don't actually categorize yourself as a freelancer. Um, okay. And not, yeah, neither does the, you know, the people hiring you or contracting with you don't either. It's, it's, there's not really like a form to fill out that says, okay, now I'm, I'm a freelancer, check you know, check the box freelancer. <laughs> yeah. That's not exactly how it works. It's, it's really more about, you know, a matter of determining whether you fit uh, under the legal definition of a freelancer. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So if you don't fit under the definition, then the law says that you're an employee instead of a freelancer. Um, and so we'll get into a little bit about the differences, uh, but, but each state has different laws on worker classification. Okay. Um, but in general, so if you take the proper steps to run your freelancing as, as a business, and, and by the way, um, you know, whether you like it or not, you, or whether you know it or not, you're a business. Freelancers are their own business, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I really try to, to drill that into people. You're, you're a business, so start getting into that mindset, you know? So, um, so if you take those steps, then um, that makes it more likely that you'll qualify as a freelancer. So... Um, so this um, could include getting a business license when it's required, um, having the proper contracts in place, um, that kind of thing, okay? Um, so I do want to just mention, so some, some states are making it harder to qualify as, as a freelancer. Okay. Um, so, for example, probably most people have heard about the AB5 law, the new AB5 law in California. Um, so lawmakers are really trying to crack down on employers um, who are, you know, a lot of them are exploiting workers by claiming that they're independent contractors when they really should be employees. Um, but, you know, it's definitely a problem. Mm -hmm. But most people believe, most freelancers believe that, um, especially creatives, believe that the law goes too far. Yeah. Um, and, th and there has been a significant backlash uh, from the freelance community. So AB5 is now in the process of, of being revised. Um, so particularly for musicians, they just announced that and it's going to be um, a, a lot of, um, you know, revisions for, for other creatives. So stay tuned on that. Um, as for the, the laws that apply to freelancers, so I, as I mentioned, freelancers are their own business, right? So business laws apply. So that's really, the main, that's really the main area of law that freelancers should be focused on, okay? Um, so most employment laws do not apply to freelancers. They do not. Um, you know, so, um, and, and so there are a couple of, there are a few laws that do apply specifically to freelancers, but those, those are very rare actually. Oh. Um, so yeah, so the idea it was, is again, that freelancers are a business so that the, the laws are already there for, for freelancers for, because they're a business, right? Okay. But that is starting to change. Um, so in New York City, a, few, a couple of years ago, they passed the Freelancers and Free Act. Probably uh, most people um, have heard about this. So it helps freelancers enforce their rights, particularly in getting paid. Very important, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's a big, big issue, big problem. Um, so hopefully, other cities and states um, will pass similar laws. Um, but regardless, freelancers need to know as much as possible about business laws, like contracts, um, you know, business structures such as LLCs. Um, and the various ways uh, of going about resolving disputes, so like cl uh, small claims court and that kind of thing. Okay, interesting. So, yeah. uh, so the ways that freelancers can like legally protect themselves in the <coughs> what what are some of those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I yeah I like to say you know there's there's three main ways to protect yourself. So number one contracts, number two contracts, number three contracts. <laughs> So I'm such very a theme here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's really important. I know people like just like to try to avoid contracts and they, you know, they just like don't even want to deal with it, but it's yeah. really important. You just have to, you have to sit down and just get it all. Just, just learn about it and just get it, you know, get it, check that box off. Right. And, you know, yeah. get a proper, proper contract in place. Um, so I like to say uh, contracts are like seatbelts, never operate without one. 
you know, so okay. it's, it's really that it's really that important. It's so, yeah, I mean, legitimately for your safety. Yeah. So, at just yeah. Like people. so I'm curious. So I, um, uh, obviously being in the creative space, having a lot of creative friends, um, this contract issue has come up with, I had a makeup artist roommate, um, and she, you know, sometimes they would either like, of course, lag in paying her or not pay her the whole thing because, oh, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. And I kept telling her, man, I'm sure even if you just Googled a simple contract, you know, and she was like, well, mm -hmm. I have it via email, so that should mm -hmm. be fine. Um, mm -hmm. I'm no. curious, <laughs> is that, you know, like, is, is that a, a real thing? Is that real life? Um, <laughs> that like, if she has it, if they have it documented, you know, it, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just kind of curious. so. Yeah, it certainly can be binding. A anything in writing that shows that you that both parties have agreed to it, that definitely can be binding. You can take that to court um, and and win on that. However, it just is more difficult to do that, mm -hmm. right? And so there's not um, those extra um, provisions that really specify when you're going to be paid, mm -hmm. how you're going to be paid, how often. And, you know, all this and the, the expenses, whether the expenses are covered, you know, late fees, whether it's late, if you can charge late fees and, and what happens, um, you know, if, if they don't pay and, and all the, the uh, consequences of that. So that's why it's, it's important to have the, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, it seems to me they could potentially look for some sort of loophole or language that you may have used in your email that mm -hmm. you, you, you weren't thinking that like, Oh, this person isn't going to pay me, you know, um, yeah. or whatever the case might be. Um, but also, you know, in case the project shuts down, like, you know, forget even mm -hmm. like, what if that something like that happens? So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know much about much, but I, I'm definitely on board with with your content. It sounds like, you know, a good amount, though. So <laughs> you're 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 off to a good start. You're off to a good, good start. Good, good, good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, so for those that are just joining in, we've been getting mm -hmm. um, a lot of love down below. Um, and we'll put again, Tristan's uh, at the end again, I'll put his um, website and everything where you can go pre order the book. Um, or, you know, if you are looking for legal advice, um, he, he's your guy. Um, but um, let me see here back to so, again, helping freelancers, small businesses, um, mm -hmm. from in, in the light of, you know, this pandemic, COVID-19, um, mm. what, what is your like biggest key takeaway for, for freelancers mm. right now? Yeah. Well, as we were mentioned, you, um, you know, like the, the non-payment issue is, mm. is a huge thing as it, in general always, but it's especially right now, you know, a lot of clients, a lot of companies are struggling. Um, so, you know, they're, they're struggling to, to pay people as well. So, so um, you know, you won't want to be extra cautious um, when taking on new clients right now, I think to okay. determine, um, you know, it, the, this applies in general, but especially right now. So um, just to determine whether they will be able to pay, whether they have the cash flow, you know, right. um, whether it's, whether it's now or, you know, as this, as this crisis continues on for the several months or, you know, even they're, they're talking about a couple of years, you know, um, so, um, so I, I just, I always say like, so try to get as much money up front as possible. Um, I know that's, that's difficult to do mm -hmm. sometimes, but, um, but you know, if that's not doable, then it, at the very least, you know, build the client more often, um, and, and tell them that you're going to build them um, more often, like every week or so. Mm. Um, yeah. So, and so to, to help make your case to the client, you know, just, just be straightforward and talk about, you know, I. I've heard about or I've experienced this. I've been, you know, a lot of um, people are not paying me. I can't afford to, to do it. I can't afford to take the risk, Sure. you know? Um, and so, um, yeah, so you just got to just level with them and, and hopefully that works. And, you know, um, the thing is, it, it's better to do that than take the risk of, um, you know, a risky client that you, you know, if you do, and then you, you end up doing all this work and not getting paid for it. And that's even worse. Totally. So, yeah. So the idea is, um, you know, I, I like to say um, the best prevent, uh, preparation is, is prevention. So preventing the problem um, in the first place is the yeah. best way to, to deal with that. Uh, yeah. 
And, and uh, you know, I love that you, you mentioned earlier when you were saying, you know, your website that you are available and you have your prices on your website. And I think mm -hmm. that transparency is super key and like very important. And so um, al allowing yourself to, you know, I, I think it's kind of difficult um, sort of when you're dealing emotions and ego is like, you know, a creative, right? It's like, oh, I don't know what I'm worth or like, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. So I think it's definitely dealing from more of an emotional standpoint, but if you're thinking it from that, like, um, you know, the aspect of like, yeah, like I have to eat. So like, might as well just like cut to the chase, you know, right, right in the mm -hmm. beginning mm -hmm. and getting yeah. those things kind of like straightened out. So yeah, right. I, I, I yeah. love the, the advice on, on sort of just like being transparent, getting that out of the way. I know when I talk mm -hmm. to clients, you know, um, and I'm having an introductory call with them at the end, we're always, I always talk, okay, budget, like, what's your budget? What, what, yep. what is it that, you know, you know, certainly I'd love to work with you in some capacity and like, you know, here's all the bells and whistles, but like at the end of the day, you know, let's, you know, what are we talking here? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, I think that that's super important. Um, I know there's been a lot of question, you know, with unemployment benefits right now, um, creatives, you know, there's the CARES Act, um, are one are freelancers available for unemployment benefits mm -hmm. um and then where would one go to find out if they qualify what's how, what's that process like mm -hmm. so in general in the past you know freelancers have never actually been eligible for unemployment benefits um so this is but so this is a very new thing so under the new cares act that was passed in in march mm -hmm. freelancers and other self-employed people now do qualify for these benefits okay so, um, so each state handles it a little bit differently. Uh, unfortunately, it's you know kind of a mess with our system, um, and a lot of states have not even like really established the new program because they like like I said they've never had to deal with this before, yeah. you know. So, um, and actually, but so California just opened their program up to, to for freelancers and self-employed people today. Hmm. So okay. yes, so but yeah. Yeah, it's April 28th. Yeah, so they've opened that up today. So um, so you can go, if you're in California, go to edd.ca.gov. Um, but uh, otherwise, um, check your state's unemployment office um, for more on this. Um, so you can just uh, Google that. So. .gov, just putting that in there for people. Yeah. Um, amazing. That's right. I, I've, you know, time. What is, what is time right now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, but that's, that's amazing. And yeah, uh, go, you know, I mean, Google is our friend so far. So um, mm. let's, let's go there to check out in your, in your cities respectively. Um, so like, obviously going freelance can be overwhelming. Um, I mean, there's definitely a lot to consider, like you said, when you're opening up your own business, um, mm. since that's what it is. So I mean, you're independently looking after your taxes, uh, savings, insurance, it can all be kind of like confusing and stressful. Um, when it comes to taxes in the current climate, do you have any recommendations for mm. freelancers? Yeah, so even in normal times, it's, it's challenging, <laughs> um, you know, to deal with taxes yeah. and, and it's very taxing. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, <laughs> sorry, I know that's that's just an example of the corny jokes that you'll find in in the books, you know. I'm into it. <laughs> um, so so luckily the deadline uh, to pay the taxes this year has been moved back to July fifteenth, as hopefully everyone hopefully everyone knows that. Um, and if you do owe significant taxes this year and you can't pay it, so the IRS is especially open and willing to work with you right now in terms of payment plans and other assistance. And so you can really actually negotiate with them. Um, and so, you know, especially right now, so to, to, so use this as an opportunity to, uh, to deal with these issues, uh, confront them right away. Don't, don't avoid them. Just really just deal. This is the time. Right now is the time to deal with these issues. So it's, it's a good opportunity to do that. Yeah, I don't think, you know, we'll find any very few times maybe in our lifetime where the government's willing to uh, be flexible mm. and work mm -hmm. with you and is, um, right. you know, you might be able to kind of have them in your corner, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so definitely great advice there. Um, you, you're, 
it's deep cuts actually over here. I'm <laughs> worried, about, worried about my taxes too. So. Oh, we all are. We all are. Yeah. Uh, and so I feel that more more so than ever. I will just channel channel what you're saying, Tristan. Um, <laughs> when I go when I go to do those when I go to do my taxes. Um, but you know, speaking of that, you know, you're saying right now is you know a better time um, than any to deal with this. Is there any um, other specific things that would be good to kind of like take care of now in this time frame as a freelancer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, all of the things that you've been putting off, you know, a lot of people have been coming to me and saying like, okay, now I'm ready to do all these things that I've been putting off, you know, just to take care of those, those business issues. So it was a great time to assess where you're at with that, you know, all the required paperwork, business licenses, maybe a DBA contracts, um, you know, if you maybe need, you're ready to do an LLC at this point or something. So, um, so things like that. So, um, yeah, do some research on that um, if you haven't already, and um, you know, reach out to some lawyers in your area if you can, and um, and definitely uh, get get the new book, uh, Laws for Freelancers too. I'll just plug <laughs> that right here. I love that. Oh yeah, my husband designed it. So uh, thanks, yeah. husband. That's yeah, amazing. he's the best. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and so I just want to make sure to mention, um, you know, it's on pre-sale right now. So, um, you know, it's 20% off um, plus free shipping if you use uh, the code PRESALE20, all in caps. Amazing. Okay. Um, uh, and that's lawsuit.org, you guys um, who are wondering out there. Um, and we'll have all this information um, uh Afterwards, um, with everything, we'll pin all the websites. Um, we'll have everything attached to uh, Tristan's video afterwards. Um, so you guys can definitely check that out. Um, you know, I'm curious, uh, right before we wrap up, you mentioned a couple of different ways, uh, DBA or doing business as mm -hmm. um, versus if you're ready for an LLC. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm just curious what... Um, like right out of the gate is a freelancer mostly just going to do a DBA because that's just a pretty simple or how would they know if they need to be an LLC? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's essentially a matter of just like how much business um, you have coming in. Right. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I, I always, I say it's, it's always a good idea to, to have that LLC, you know, um, as soon as you can, um, but it's sometimes it, it doesn't make sense yet for people. Um, so it, you know, it might take some time to, uh, to get the business into, to, for it to be worth it for the, you know, the costs and the paperwork, the extra paperwork involved with that. So, um, yeah, it's just a matter of that. And then also, um, talk, definitely talk to a tax professional, uh, okay. CPA, um, to, um, see if you could get some tax benefits, from that. So that happens um, at the uh, higher, higher income levels. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, it's just a, basically like kind of the amount of liability you want to take on, right? As a, mm -hmm. as a business owner. Okay. Right. Yeah. So exactly. So um, that's why it's, it's, it's always best to, to get the LLC as soon as you can. Um, but again, like, you know, it's, it's not always worth it, right? Um, if you, if you're just starting out and maybe you just have like, um, a couple of clients uh, here and there. So, okay, amazing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, well, thank you very much for your advice. I'm very um, curious to hop on lawsuit.org and um, pre-order this book. Uh, I'm because I, I will definitely. I will definitely need it. <laughs> um, but of course, you guys can follow uh, law.soup on Instagram uh, to learn more about, you know, sort of the spectrum of law, how it applies to you as a creative, hopefully some more um, jokes that we you've heard <laughs> here. We love our like, as I call them, dad jokes, but um, I love Not quite a dad yet, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's okay. Um, really quick, let me see, there was a question here. Okay. Um, as a freelancer, do we have to have or consult with a lawyer about the... Okay, um, right, if, as a freelancer, if they have to consult with a lawyer about the legal part of a contract, or is that not needed? Like, if they made a contract on their own, mm -hmm should they consult a lawyer? Um, so it's not legally required to, to consult with a lawyer, but it's definitely recommended, um, you know, because unless you know exactly everything about contracts, then, you know, you know, like, 
what you're doing, you know, with that, you know, if you went to law school or something, you know, <laughs> but um, yeah, so even, even if, um, you know, I, I, I put as much of, of my knowledge uh, on the website um, and the, and the books as possible, but, but still, you know, I, obviously I have years and years of training that, you know, the, the nuances of everything um, as a lawyer. Um, so, you know, it's, it's always, it's always best to just have a, a lawyer take a look at, at those, um, those contracts. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like thinking about the long term versus the short term, right. Where it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe this cost me a couple hundred dollars up front right now, but like, think of, how long this contract is going to last me before I'm going to have to revise it and how many uh, potential interactions this contract is going to have. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And if it can save you from, uh, you know, non-payment issues, um, you know, that you, you know, I, you know, you're, if you, someone is owes you $5,000 and like you could have had a yeah. contract put in place for a few hundred, um, right. then you'd like, that would that would save you a lot of money so. yeah 100 percent. i mean that's yeah. you know why hopefully you know like i'm go to a tax person because i know i'm not going to get everything that i think i could get back they know all the loopholes and the mm -hmm. kind of the language to use and, and things of that nature so yeah um thank you for the question you guys i i really appreciate that um but again, lawsoup.org is where you guys can pre-order the book. Um, we'll share the code with you again so you can get that 20% off. We love a discount. <laughs> um, and yeah, we, we, we appreciate you, Tristan. Thank you so much for thank tuning you, in. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, husband, for the amazing illustration. And, and thank him as a fellow creative. We love keeping that in the family. So yeah. um, appreciate your time and all your thoughtful knowledge and willingness to share with our community. It's amazing. Um, you guys, lawsoup.org. And of course, ask Tristan. Uh, I'm sure even if, you know, we put the website, I'm sure if you're going through lawsoup.org, you'll be able to find him, hit him up on his DMs on Instagram if you need some some law contract information too. Sure, so. sure. Thank you so much, Megan. I appreciate Thank it. You. Have a great day. And we'll okay. Bye. Bye. Um, Tristan is a gem. Thank you very much, Tristan, for um, that amazing information. You guys, we, we love you. We want you to stay healthy. We really love um, this time with you here live on Industry Exchange. Um, please stay happy, forever creating. Uh, that's what keeps us um, you know, going and, and gives us life and sustains us. So we really appreciate you guys. Um, actually, this Thursday, so in a couple of days, um, we're going to be coming back for another industry exchange. Um, we want to keep this information coming to you. Um, so we're going to be meeting with uh, Seema. Um, and Seema Tillek, she's uh, going to talk about intellectual property, uh, media entertainment, and she's also a business attorney. So um, a different aspect, again, talking about intellectual property things that I think is going to be really interesting. Um, but again, hop on to lawsuit.org to pre-order that book. I'm Megan Jones. You can check me out at Meg P. Jones on Instagram. Um, I, I would love your feedback on this. Um, thank you to my raw family. Um, be safe, be healthy, be hydrated, you guys. Um, and we'll talk soon. We'll see you guys on Thursday.